As I mentioned earlier, in our studio, we do have um, Professor John G. Jackson, noted historian and author, and also in our studio we have a local historian, Brother Ralph Crowder. Uh, I would like to welcome you to Perspectives. I mean, you know, could that happen? In fact, that's the white man let him come up in the first place. Well, there are a lot of reasons for that now. There could be a lot of reasons, the purposes they served. Number one, the movement was strongly black nationalist. Mm -hmm. This movement, and even their own leadership now, I understand, I haven't seen the article in the May issue of Playboy, but certain other articles, they've attacked each other for taking the movement away from the black community into an integrated community, right? One of the major enemies of revolution is confusion of revolution. So when people are confused, you give them publicity, hoping the masses will follow them. And not only do you do that, but you make it appear as if they are in fact the vanguard. You give the confused forces all the publicity. On television. On television, yes, after a certain point, again. But see, we recognize that, that's why we weren't on TV in that period. We need to rethink uh, that alchemism in, uh, in its entirety. And yet I think the one thing we need to think about most is the nature of black leadership. And we need to begin to ask, leader, where are you leading me? And maybe <coughs> the next time around, the charismatic leader may not be the best party. Maybe we need good administrators. Maybe we need good program planners. People design a program for liberation that can function whether he's there or not. Maybe we need some people who are whose ego is not so rude and who can uh, work in obscurity out of uh, the limelight and don't have to run to a camera every time they see they see one. My, my point was just for the majority of the reporters there yesterday, black or white. Uh, no, there were there were a large percentage percentage that were white. Yes. And and even is even the, their method of them? presentation is is different. Is it correct to oust them? Well, I don't think that. Uh, were I they ousted? I don't think. Well, there was an attempt were. to. No, I don't oh, think that they you, were ousted. You shouldn't say they were ousted. See, this is what happens. <laughs> no, but what I'm you know, because I saw something in the paper that uh, there was a split between Hatchard and Jesse Jackson. I think. In unity, there is variation, and you don't have to agree on every point for there to be right. unity. Look, they, that doesn't happen just on blacks. Uh, you go to a Democratic I convention, they talk I about know, erosion but, but and split, said, but that's a term you know, they we all understand. They were ousted, but they really were not ousted. No, but I didn't say they were. I said, is it correct to oust them? There was an attempt to oust them. Uh, Mr. Brown, one further question. Uh, uh, how do you deal with the problem of black orientated stations that play black music but are white controlled and they often in the black neighborhood? It's, it's a serious problem. You're talking about the white control, sock and soul, make your knees freeze and your liver quiver. <laughs> Those stations ought to be dealt with by the black community. The black community cannot stand around and have pool room arguments about how bad a local station is owned by a white man selling us broken down furniture, a finance company that's robbing us, and a car that breaks down before we get a block away from it with a Negro sitting there talking a bunch of garbage, calling himself a black disc jockey. Now, the community has to be the person ultimately responsible. The community must move on those stations and on those Negroes representing black interests. Black on black, in black, where the brothers are. The uh, man that seems to have started it all was uh, Dr. Edward Wilmot Blyden, born down in the Danish West Indies, and he went to Liberia and was president of Liberia College for a number of years. He wrote a great book called Christianity, Islam, and the Negro Race, and so on and so forth. And he was the founder of the Pan-African Movement. In 1967, I went to Cuba and Vietnam. White boy took my passport when I came back. Now he took my passport because he couldn't do nothing, you understand? And he just had to do something, you understand? <laughs> because the passport says that 
This holder, this passport, is not valid for travel into the following countries. But the passport doesn't say that the man is not. And the passport can never say that because that would be the first infringement of bourgeois illusion of democracy, the right of free association. Consolidated, consolidated discount record stores. Now through Wednesday, the following 45s are specially priced at 69 cents. Wondering, Geraldine DeHaas. I'm I'm coming home to Spinners, the Long Ranger, Oscar Brown Jr., Funky Party, Clarence Reed, Too Late, Tavares, I Wish It Were Me You Love, The Dells, It's Not That Easy, Barbara and the Uniques. The album of the week is Super Sax, featuring salt peanuts for only three seventy-nine. Uh, unquestionably, the next 30 years, the next 20 years, into the 21st century, will be very difficult for black people. Uh, one, what, what, what do they do? One of the things... Let me just say, first of all, talk about what we are facing. During the 19th century, there's a lot of quackery, uh, a lot of pseudoscience, a variety of ways that we were set aside from the human community. Uh, you still have the remnants of this mentality there, but what is frightening as we approach the 21st century is that those who talk in terms of quackery have the technological apparatus to now actually bring about their quackery up on masses and masses of people, namely us. This dude from the Confederation of Police asked, will I talk about drug abuse? I told the man, hey, drug abuse ain't something you talk about, it's something you do, until you get hip to why they call it dope. Every despicable, degraded role that we have been taught to look at and laugh at. Right? <laughs> If somebody sits and looks at what's happening, can they teach a child self-respect? If we look at good times, can we teach self-respect? If I'm a black woman and I'm looking at good times and laughing and it's a little child, and I'm laughing at black men being degraded, what am I teaching the child? So that that's all, that's warfare. Those destructive images are no different than bullets from an M16 rifle coming into your living room. There are people already projecting massive groups of black people, African people, that will not be around simply because the world cannot afford them, so therefore we are putting them outside the lifeboat of humanity. So that's going to be very difficult. I think well, another thing that what we will have to do is become more race conscious. Become more race conscious as a people. When people are out of power and oppressed, they make certain adjustments. And some people adjust to being out of power and adjust that psyche to being out of power and complain forever about being out of power and never, absolutely never, expect to come to power. They can talk about what they will do if they are in power. They can talk about it forever because they never expect to come. And they do not know that this creates an internal crisis within them. For them, then. This is the crisis at the threshold of liberation. And this is where we are right now. Our liberation may be coming both too soon and not too late. And this is a contradiction in turn with the element of truth at the center, if indeed you can find the truth. And I think part of our crisis is the crisis in leadership, personality, and because we have had so many types of leaders, and we have asked few questions of leaders, we are, at, we are like a people fighting to get on a train. And finally, we get on the train, and some half-wise person say, related, that is the train.
Maybe it would be helpful for the um, listening audience if you kind of um, generally told us how you got started in the study of history. History. History.